Uh, welcome everybody to the UX functional group update. So we're just going to go over uh, UX team, some updates to our UX team structure, as well as uh, our projected OKRs for Q3. So for all of the new people who have started, welcome to GitLab. Uh, this is the UX team. Um, get to know us, <laughs> do some coffee chats, say hello. We'd love to hear about your experiences um, as a new person coming into GitLab, especially when it comes to the user experience. Um, your perspective is really helpful. Um, so here is the UX team. We are two UX researchers and eight UX designers. And together we span eight countries and six time zones. We've recently changed up the way we do uh, some things here on the UX team. Before, the way we were structured uh, is pretty much a single team and designers would work um, not all over the place, but in different areas of the product. So um, wherever the most need was, you could work on platform one milestone and be working on discussion the next milestone. Um, we have had traditionally some people that were pretty much experts in certain areas. They tended to work in the same areas um, for subsequent milestones. And we just made that uh, official. <clears throat> so here's a list of each UX designer and the product area that they are responsible for. Um, you can also see this on the team chart as well as the organizational chart that's listed. So um, if you're not sure who is taking care of what, you can go ahead and check those charts, or you could always just uh, ask us in the UX channel, that's fine too. So the benefits of doing this is um, each UXer gets to work more closely with the PM to really understand the roadmap and the direction of that area. When you're working in the same area, milestone after milestone, you're closer, you can anticipate, uh, you can see potential and opportunities that you may not see if you're bouncing around. Um, it also allows them to partner closer with the engineers and the PM to work through discovery and issues together because they're part of that ongoing conversation, milestone after milestone versus just coming in at the beginning of a milestone. Um, it also reduces the overhead of planning and scheduling for, for me, yours truly. <laughs> um, if every designer is working more closely with the PM, uh, that's less time that I have to spend in a spreadsheet assigning. Um, each PM should be working with their UX designer um, to assign and, and understand capacity. And, and I just need to be brought in um, if there's an issue or they need some assistance in, in getting some backup. So each UXer leads an area and serves as a backup to another. We're trying to treat these backups as an exception and not the rule um, because everybody does lead a certain area. But if we have a big initiative in, in one area of the, of the product um, and we need someone to pull on uh, some extra duties, then we do have that. Uh, it does ensure some cross training and some coverage, especially if people go on vacation um, or they're out sick, then we do have someone that has knowledge in that area. And hopefully this will also allow PMs to know their resources and really understand um, the overhead when, when product managers are planning. So on to Q3 OKRs. Uh, we did things a little bit differently this time around. Um, we have three main OKRs. One is pretty much all encompassing. It would be UX and UX design uh, and uh, UX research and UX designers, excuse me. And then we also broke out some more very UX research specific. So the first one is to establish the user experience direction for the security dashboard. Security is, is a huge uh, undertaking in a big new area of the product. And it's something that we don't have a uh, complete understanding of, at least on the UX team. So we're going to start by aiding uh, that team in completing a competitive analysis to really understand what's already out there in the marketplace, what the expectations are from uh, a user for a security dashboard. And the goal is to identify 10 must have items for that security dashboard dashboard. So what do users expect to see when they go in there? Um, what are they, what is their, their purpose and how can we make sure that, that they're able to get their job done intuitively, quickly, um, usefully. 
And then once we've identified those and we've done that competitive analysis, the goal is to do a design artifact discovery issue and really take a look at, at, at a holistic view of what that could be and then iterate. Um, start with the, the smallest uh, possible improvement, uh, something that's going to make it better and start going in that direction. For those of you not familiar with design artifacts, um, you could also call them discovery. Uh, but essentially what it means is that the goal of that issue is not to get it implemented uh, in, in GitLab. The goal is to understand the space, work with engineers, product managers, and UX designers, and, and even research to understand the problem space and do discovery. And the outcome may be a full-fledged design, it may be an iterative first step, or it may just be better understanding of what we need to accomplish in that area. So there's really no predefined idea of what that outcome is, but it's a space for discovery and understanding to happen. So we wanna do that with a security dashboard and make sure that we're really thinking about this, because um, this could be really big for us in terms of value that we're adding. And then for the UX research, um, and UX research would be part of that, that OKR, that's actually a pretty big undertaking um, that would involve um, a, a lot of participation from all of UX. And for the specific OKRs for UX research, um, really looking to, one, incorporate personas into our design process for 100% of the product. We have not updated our user personas in quite a while. I think we just recently did some research for an operations manager uh, persona, which we're adding, adding in, but there's, there's quite a few others coming up, um, security being one of them. So we want to do kind of an inventory and make sure that we're addressing this across the board. And, and personas are important because they allow us to make sure that we're always thinking in terms of the user. Um, it's really easy when, especially when you use GitLab every day, to think in, in terms of what affects you and your personal experience. So it's important to kind of step aside and, and have that that user represent the goals of, of what you're working on. And of course, designers would assist in that. And then identifying five pain points for users who have left GitLab.com and working with product managers to identify solutions. So the outcome of this one is really to understand um, why people are leaving and how we can uh, solve those problems and, and keep more of our user base moving forward. And again, I expect that to be UX research led and driven um, with assistance from UX design. And lastly, and most importantly, I'm gonna be on vacation next week. Uh, I am attending Dice Tower Con. Uh, if you don't know what it is, I'm sad for you. It's awesome. It's a whole week of board gaming uh, in Orlando. So I will be there and I am not going to be working on GitLab. So please ping Tori Davis uh, if you have any urgent matters. Um, but if it can wait, go ahead and at me um, or even send me a message in Slack. I'm not gonna be checking anything, but I will check up once I get back and I'll make sure to follow up with everybody. Um, but definitely gonna enjoy my vacation. I will, I'll take lots of pictures. If you, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, you might want to because that's where all those pictures are gonna go. I'm, I'm always on, on Twitter. <laughs> So any questions? I'm gonna give it five, four, three. Sarah. Oh, who is that? No, this, <laughs> so close. <laughs> this is a good one, Sarah. Um, right. My name is Joyce Thompson and I just started last week, so I still haven't been here a whole oh. week. But I do okay. analyst relations now for the company. So I talk to the industry analysts and have access to the research. And uh, th thank you, Richard. Um, when you get back from vacation, this is more of a comment. Um, maybe we should get together because if you're doing research into security and, and stuff, there may be some stuff amongst the analysts that we could help you with. So that's all I was going to say. So it's not really a question. It's more of an offering of, hey, let's get together. But for goodness sake, go have oh, fun at right. Tower Dice first. <laughs> no, welcome, Joyce. That's fantastic. Um, no, actually, I love questions, so it's not a big deal at all. That's exciting. Please, please, please go ahead and put a meeting on my calendar. And, and I'm here all week, so we could even meet before I leave. Oh, um, okay. And, if you, if you, yeah, we can do that, too. I'll, I'll look at your calendar. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so I think 
that's going to be it. Oh, someone asked, what does one do at Dice Tower Convention? Well, so they have a convention floor where you can buy um, rare, hard to find board games um, and do trades. And of course, buy easy to find board games. There's a lot of sellers there. Um, but also there are um, just room after room after room set up with um, games that people are playing so you can sign up to play different games. Um, it's really cool because it's a good chance to um, play games that you, you don't normally get to play because um, of a lack of people. Like I have one game that requires a minimum of 12 people to play. Uh, and I mean, I have a lot of friends, but I don't have a lot of friends who are gonna be coming up to Date City, Florida to play board games with me. Um, my favorite games, uh, right now my favorite games Still Time Stories, I just love that game. If you, if you haven't played it, you should. Um, Time Stories is a, um, oh, AMA has started. Well, oh, <laughs> I thought you were saying that something else was starting, Pedro. I'm like, oh my God, I'm sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> you got me on that one, Pedro. Whew, had a little bit of a heart attack there. Yeah, Sarah, AMA has started. Um, but yeah, Time Stories is a good collaborative game. Sagrada is a really good game played with uh, Yob, Yob kicked my butt at that game at the last summit. Um, he's really, really good at it. It involves dice and stained glass windows. Um, so it's a really cool game. Um, and we found this really great game. I can't remember the name of it, but we played it in Iceland. My husband and I, we bought it there. And you are an innkeeper. And the way you make your money is by murdering your, <laughs> your guests and, and burying the bodies. And so you have to earn like places to bury the bodies and all kinds of stuff. It's actually really, really cool. It sounds more morbid than it is, but no, it's pretty morbid actually. So yeah, it's a really good game. I should bring it with me to the summit um, and we can play. The Bloody Inn, exactly. Andre, I'm glad you know that game. It's a fantastic game. It's really, really good. So, well, awesome. Well, thanks everybody for asking me uh, fun questions. I think it's called The Bloody Inn. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know it'd be really nice to to gamify some of our stuff, Pedro. So, <laughs> tell me, you're ridiculous. <laughs> uh, which games make for the best summit games? I think collaborative games. Um, collaborative games um, and staying away from games that uh, might offend anyone. I know we had one game last time. Um, within this, the premise of the game was not intended to be offensive, but people could be offended by the name. So we want to be more sensitive this time around and make sure that, um, yeah, Reb, Reb knows. Um, but there are other versions of that game. There's a werewolf version of that game, which actually is the one I have that you need um, uh, like 12 plus people to play. It's a really um, extensive version of werewolf, which would be cool. So collaborative is good. I mean, you can play competitive, but I get really, I get really competitive. So even my husband won't play with me. Um, he only will play collaborative games with me. <laughs> no, I don't, Abby. I, I don't, I don't have a poker face for that. Like I just would giggle the whole time. <laughs> All right, everybody. It's so awesome talking about board games. I'll do a special, um, recap of my board game experience uh, on a team call when I get back. All right. Well, I'm going to shut it down. I'll see everybody on the team call in about 15. Thanks for the AMA. Ciao. Yep. Bye.